Boy, do we have a treat for you. We sure do. Hey, everybody, Jim Masters here. This is the Jim Masters Show, live entertainment, lifestyle, celebrity talk show series. Thanks for joining us. It's always awesome when you are here at Lovity Hall, stopping by to be entertained and having a good time with us. And boy, you're going to have that. We're going to have some live music and a visit from the spirit of music legend, Kenny Rogers. How's that going to happen? Well, stick with us. You'll find out. Matter of fact, we have America's number one tribute artist when it comes to Kenny Rogers, Justin Sullivan, here on our show, coming to us live and direct from the Music City, from Nashville, Tennessee. He's going to perform live for us as well. And of course, he's with the Real Deal Band, which is a fantastic tribute band as well. Now, look at this. It's an evening with the gambler. <laughs> you really think it is, Kenny. Sounds, looks, same mannerisms. We were just chatting. We did a sound check just moments ago and uh, making sure the audio and video and everything is good for you guys because he is going to pe uh, he's going to perform a song or two for us here on the show, which I think is really, really cool. But just look at these shots. I mean, you really do think that you are talking to and listening to Kenny and he's just got it down so exacting uh the sound the look the spirit he has always admired of course Kenny Rogers and the phenomenal music and they tour the country and they do all kinds of great concerts and lots of terrific things celebrating Kenny Rogers it's an evening with a gambler the music of Kenny Rogers performed by Justin Sullivan and the real deal band we'll talk about all of them and so much more. And you know, what's really cool is uh, Justin, as I mentioned, has just worked so hard to perfect the look, the sound, and that's really terrific. And Kenny Rogers, of course, one of the greatest entertainers uh, of our time, singer, songwriter, collaborator with so many incredible artists, Dolly Parton and so many others, historic, legendary songs, of course, over the years. Now, I actually had the great pleasure of meeting and chatting with Kenny Rogers, interviewing him as well through PBS. You guys know that I've been on PBS for years as a television host, among all the other things I do in television and radio. And one of the great moments was having an opportunity to chat with Kenny Rogers himself. What a grand guy, a real gentleman, funny, witty. He had everybody laughing. He was so gracious to everybody, and it was really a blast. So this is a photo when we were together for a PBS uh, meeting and function and event, and I had an opportunity to chat with him there, and it was terrific. So I got a chance to meet Kenny, uh, which was really a blessing. He is greatly, greatly missed. But one of the great things about it is Justin and the band sort of bring back those memories. Uh, Kenny might not be here in the flesh, but he is certainly here in spirit and through uh, folks like Justin Sullivan and the Real Deal Band. Let me tell you a little bit about Justin. You know, he it doesn't just do this. He's had a prolific and uh, long music career. He grew up in Fairview outside Nashville, Tennessee, and he comes from a musical family. In fact, his mother and his sisters performed years ago on the Junior Grand Ole Opry. And while in junior high, Justin became involved with Southern gospel music, and he sung in several groups. He and his wife, Janet, were in the Bahamas years ago and went to a Kenny Rogers Roasters restaurant in Nassau. Remember those? Those were good. I wish they were still around. His wife noticed that people there had stopped what they were doing and they stared. And when Janet looked around the restaurant, his wife, she saw a photo of Kenny Rogers and realized while the customers were looking at Justin so strangely on a 70s flower power cruise, he was asked to perform a Kenny Rogers number to an afternoon audience when it was discovered he could sing. And over the years, people continued to stop Justin and ask for his autograph or take a photo with him. Justin was contacted by Adam Michaels from Hollywood's Avenue of the Stars, who saw him perform on a Christmas show hosted by the Daystar program in your corner. And Adam remarked that he had been looking for Justin for months since he has this uncanny resemblance to Kenny Rogers. Justin has prepared a show with some of the best musicians Nashville has to offer. And three of the band members have performed with country music legends and toured with Grand Ole Opry members. So the musicians, you know, the whole gang, the whole group, they are, are 
true talented group from uh, you know top to bottom. And when you get a chance to see them perform in concert, you're actually going to think you are seeing Kenny and the band uh, on stage, which is really, truly amazing. Again, Kenny Rogers is uh, with us in spirit, and uh, yet we have the opportunity to uh, celebrate Kenny and honor him with Justin Sullivan joining us. Again, some music coming up. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Gym Masters Show. It's always a party here, lots of levity. We have almost a thousand episodes you can binge watch on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. If you wanna interact with us, well, you can do that right now in our Lovety Hall chat room as the show is live right now. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel right now, Gym Masters TV costs nothing. You can comment in the Lovety Hall chat room, say hello to one another, say hello to us who might even sprinkle, you know, a comment or two on screen if we have time. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, home to the Gym Masters show. Without further ado, he, you're going to, you're going to take a double take. You're going to think you're looking at Kenny Rogers, but maybe you are. Here's Justin Sullivan coming to us from Nashville. Justin, I mean, Kenny, I mean, <laughs> how are you, my welcome to the Gym Masters show. My goodness, it's a pleasure. Really, truly a pleasure, Jim. I so look forward to this. I think you and I have a mutual friend. Uh, we, You know, I think we have many Kenny being one of them originally <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and John and, and just so many other people, you know, you yeah. look nice and comfy where you are there well, in Nashville, huh? We're on our tour bus. You're on the tour bus, right? We're on the bus. Yeah. This is the bus. We have a 45 foot uh, Prevost wow. HJ 45 that we tour on. That is nice. That is absolutely. I love the jacket too. Really cool. Nice look. Thanks, sir straighten it up make it look a little better baby. so so you're walking around doing your thing in life and people stop your wife and they stop you and they're like wait a minute is that kenny uh, what was that experience like as people started doing that that had to be very cool well the, the first time it happened i thought maybe my zipper was down i knew i was getting a lot of attention <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a little embarrassing and my wife did catch me on that she said no it's not that they they think you're kenny rogers that was at that roasters thank, thank you kenny rogers and, yeah and so we we kind of hammed it up a little and on the on that cruise the flower power it was their virgin cruise and, and we were on that and, and had a great time but the disc jockeys there that were uh, doing some some uh, show on the on the ship also uh took note of that and and it got really funny because they had these cards that they were passing out and they said kenny rogers is on the on the cruise yeah kenny, on the, and if you see kenny give him one of our cards wow. so i started collecting all these cards and and, and so eventually I, I made my way to those guys and i said so so what's the deal and they said have you ever thought really of, of doing this and i said well it, it's kind of come and gone over the years but i really nailed nailed, nailed anything down yeah so it's it's been it's been it it's changed your life, hasn't it? It has, and it can can be scary. Uh, not that I'm a huge entertainer, but to to walk into well, I'll give you a good example. Uh, we flew down to Fort Lauderdale, and we're going through the Sawgrass Mall they have there uh, at Fort Lauderdale. And my wife was shopping around, and I had stopped uh, to just rest a moment. And uh, there was a lady that was doing teeth whitening in one of the aisles of the mall, and she stopped me and said, and I could tell, you know, as soon as they do the double take, you know, that, uh oh, it's on, they, they've, they've pegged me. So uh, she said, are you, are you him? And I said, yes, I, I qualify as a him. So I did say, yes, I'm, I'm him. And uh, so she said, can I, can I get your autograph? And I said, well, sure. And I don't want to defame somebody, especially as, as important in it to, to a whole culture as Kenny Rogers. I just wrote Kenny on a piece of paper and I gave it to her and she said, would you sing something? And I said, sure. I said, lady, I'm your knight in shining armor. And she went, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. She was yeah. patting her chest kind of a thing, you know. And mm -hmm. I said, well, you're welcome. And I thought it was over and I walked away. And in just a couple of moments, it was a, and she was taking off the coat that she had on and she come out, she comes running up and we're doing the selfie thing and I'm yeah. having it. 
with her a little bit. We're taking a few pictures. And then I noticed out of my peripheral vision, something had happened. The whole mall had stopped. Mm -hmm. Four lanes of traffic stopped on the interstate all at once. And I was, "Uh uh-oh, this could get ugly. This this is what it feels like. If you're a real celebrity, be out in public. They have they have this kind of a fear and you don't realize that man i ducked into a bathroom hung out for about 30 minutes before i came out so. <laughs> people coming in and out like the guy's still in there <laughs> is he trapped <laughs> get the maintenance man we think he's trapped in a stall <laughs> talk now. about talk about stalling <laughs> good one good one i like it jim yeah, i'm quick yeah. <laughs> yeah, I notice it. Yeah, it's, this is that crazy. Irish part of me. It's quick, quick humor. Yeah, I we dropped. <laughs> yes, the, there oh, you go. That's why you got it right away. See, because you are. You got it lickety split. So, how many years have you been doing this? Six weeks. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I hear you have a studio audience too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like six oh, weeks. <laughs> I sang gospel music for most of my life and have written yeah. several gospel songs and some of them have been published. Yeah. Uh, recorded by some groups. One over in North Carolina recorded one. It's, it's called He Was Thinking of Me, mm-hmm. uh, a gospel song that I'd written years ago. And then uh, uh, the guy calls and says, well, I've been looking for a Kenny. Uh, COVID was going on. I had done some uh, shows that, on the Daystar channel. If you're familiar uh, with the Daystar sure. channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman that has a show on there called Carrie. It's uh, the show is called In Your Corner. Mr. Kerry Farr has it. He interviews uh, celebrity uh, baseball players, football players, oh, boxers, yeah. things like that. that have come to Christ, and, and he asked me to do some of those shows for him. I said sure. So I did a couple, and it was really kind of ad lib fill in stuff for his show. Um, so I, he said he wanted somebody to sing some old hymns. I said, well, I am an old hymn man. I can do it. But I'm- <laughs> You could do it. I am an old hand. So in doing that, uh, this guy calls and says he's looking for something like this. And I said, well, I think I could put a band together. A band. Mm -hmm. Made one phone call. One. One phone call. One phone call. And it was to a good friend of mine that I had traveled with and done a little gospel music out in Kingston, Nevada. Mm. And he said, man, he said, I said, I got a guy's thinking about doing the Kenny Rogers stuff. He said, you got to do it. You got to do it. It's not a choice. You, you've got to do that. He said, it's, I saw you in the blue coat. We got up and done some music. And he said, you got, you've got to do this. If you don't, you're always going to wonder what if. And he said, I might have a band. I said, I'm interested. So he, he set up an appointment. I sat down and met with Mr. Glenn Dickerson and uh, Mr. Greg Hutcherson. So Mr. Greg and, and Glenn and I sit and talk for a little bit. And I said, what do y'all think? Do you think we got a shot at doing something like this and, and doing a Kenny Rogers tribute? And they looked at each other and said, yeah, I think, you know, the look is there. If we can work on the vocals and stuff and get something going, I think we'd, we'd have a show. Well, let me tell you about these two guys and some other guys. If you don't mind, can I tout my band? Yes, you should. Absolutely. Because like we said, it takes a village, doesn't it? Brother. Boy, you got some of the top musicians and others with you, which is awesome to surround yourself with such great creative talent, huh? You lucked but, out there. I mean, one yeah. phone call, and, and and here I've got two Grand old Opry players sitting in front of me. Uh, Glenn Dickerson played with Gene Shepard for 25 years. He's the gentleman on your far left, on if you're looking at the screen. Uh, and the guy right beside of him is Mr. Greg Hutchins. Greg uh, had played with Billy Walker and produced and played on Adam's side. Mm. Uh, that Billy Walker, country uh, music legend. Yeah. They both played with Gene Shepard together. Gene uh, had Greg playing drums for him or her for uh, 18 years. And Greg, you'll get a kick out of this. Greg won National DJ of the Year twice. Wow. That's a pretty big honor. That's incredible. To have run it twice. And uh, Glenn, of course, has done the CMA, the the uh, country music stuff downtown Nashville, and played I don't know how many artists uh, downtown, and still does uh, when we're not touring. Uh, beside of Greg, and uh, there is a, a young lady, uh, Miss Brenda Shepherd. 
and Brenda is our keyboardist. Uh, Brenda uh, came from a Christian background or raised in church and her father and played a lot of country music, uh, not country, weddings and played with gospel music uh, around town and, and got to know Glenn and that's how that came together. Then the guy that looks like the Blues Brothers right to my Oh, wife, yeah. <laughs> he's the only member there really wasn't from in and around Tennessee. He, he comes from Houston, Texas. And uh, his name is Robert Clark, and we love him. He's my acoustic player, and he can make the guitar. He just milks the notes right out of the guitar. Uh, beside me to my left is Miss Gail Hutchins. Gail has uh, uh, played with, uh, uh, well, she sang back up with Mr. Squire Parsons. You may remember a song, Beulah Land. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was her that sang went back up with Mr. Squire Parsons on that. And that she happens to be married to our drummer, Greg. Then uh, the guy that's holding the guitar behind her, uh, Mr. Steve Kennedy. Uh, St Steve is kind of our Robin Williams of the group. He is a oh, yeah. quick-witted guy. Now, Steve played with for 20 years with Gene Shepard. I'm sorry. Uh, he played with Ricky Van Shelton and Lynn Anderson. He played with Lynn Anderson for 20 years. Uh, he's done master sessions, uh, tours and cruised around the world doing music and uh, played with Johnny Cash and Glacier and, and Ed Bruce, uh, played with a lot of, he just can't keep a job. That's his trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a great guy and a great bunch of folks. And uh, we've got some tech guys and got a gentleman named uh, Vernon Calton that drives the bus for us. And, and Frank Darty helps on all the technical stuff and, and helps us make sure our program's flowing, flowing good. So we've got a really good crew. Uh, that's that's out doing this and and i tell you they their music is so beautiful sometimes it gets so distracting to try to remember that i'm supposed to be singing right <laughs> i mean if you can imagine they just uh, studio musicians are they're a whole nother league man they're they magic take, aren't they yeah take the music out of the air yeah absolutely man. right now, now, had you been a Kenny Rogers fan through and through prior to all of this happening? Has Kenny been one of your favorites over the years? And did you get a chance to uh, have the blessing and opportunity to meet him over the years? I never did get to meet Kenny. Um, I did. The closest that I've gotten so far, uh, Kenny did a project. I think it was She Rides Wild Horses. It was one of his latter projects. And we do three of the songs off of that. We do Buy Me a Rose, which was produced by Mr. Rex Benson. Uh, it's interesting, Rex, Mr. Benson has a app on his phone that if somebody does Buy Me a Rose, it flags him and tells him something's going on with Buy Me a Rose. So he contacted us and I thought maybe I was in trouble. Uh oh, maybe I owe him some royalties or something. I don't want to get in trouble with anyone. And uh, he said, no, he said, uh, I saw your version. He had pulled it up and saw it. Uh, and he said, I really like what you did on their song. Said, I knew Kenny for 30 years and said, worked with him on different projects and said, uh, we want to reintroduce that song. We're looking for somebody to do that. But he's, uh, he said, y'all keep doing it. He said, you're doing a great job. He said, we like what you're doing with that. Uh, so that was, that was kind of given a blessing to be able to, to keep doing that song. But, what you, you asked the question i didn't mean to detract or, or no very that's long. great you're rolling along it's we love these stories uh, the story and you ought to hear the stories on the bus i mean for <laughs> these guys right hey early on we had uh, roy orbison's keyboards playing with us wow yeah really? jim, yeah jim kirby uh his nickname is turbo but jim jim was with us when we did some early stuff man i mean I look in nashville tennessee everyone mm -hmm. comes to nashville to be discovered it's like a family, isn't it? And you can shake a tree limb and three bass players will fall off. Musicians <laughs> 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 are everywhere. I love that. Right. They are, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and it, it, I've told my guys, I said, you know, the show must go on. Just like one of the songs that Kenny did with Dolly, the show must go on. And I said, if one of y'all are sick or have you know, an emergency or something come up, we need someone to be able to fill in you know, to take your place, is that going to be hard? And they looked at each other and said, no. no. You live in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. We can fill in anytime. We 
on at any time. And well, you know what's amazing about Nashville is it's become a hub for so many different genres yeah. of music, jazz, and a lot of other genres of music. Nashville yeah. has become a home to, right? Yes, it, and it's it's amazing that uh, so many different kinds of music now are. It's not just the home of country music anymore, just like you said. Uh, rock and roll man and uh, yeah. it, 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 that's what they're booking in the rhyme and the mother the mother church of country music is now booking some rock and roll stuff that's right exactly yeah. Which, and you grew up just outside right in fairview just outside the the city line yeah i can be in nashville in less than 30 minutes wow yeah downtown so, so tell us about uh touring you know what is it like and where do you guys go and what what are some of those performances like is Again, for the audience, when they are there, they they think they're seeing Kenny. They feel the spirit, the the sound, the songs. You sort of bring it right back to life, which is which is incredible. Well, his music is timeless. I mean, these are love songs. I mean, if you start thinking about through the years, uh, she believes in me. Um, even Coward of the County, which is basically a rape song. It's, it's the love that the man had for his wife. And he took, when somebody took advantage, he stood up for her and he, he didn't kill these people. You know, it, it wasn't a murderous, hateful. It was a, it was a retribution for what had happened. But uh, all these songs that we're doing uh, are love songs. Uh, and it, it's, it transcends really the times that we live. It's, it's about love. And how do you, how do you really ever outlive love? It's here forever. Uh, that's the strongest power the world has ever known is love. And to be able to do these songs, which have been done all over the world, Kenny Rogers uh, won at the time, I think this was uh, when he did the uh, Greatest Hits album. He had sold 20, oh, let's see, 100, let's see, it was 22 million copies of the same album in one year. It takes 10 million copies to receive a Diamond Award. At that time, only six artists had ever done that. Right. He was in that top six. But it, and he actually did it twice. It took 10, and he had sold 22 million. Unbelievable, right? Oh. Yeah. And worldwide yeah. tours. And then when he teams up with Dolly. Dolly Parton. I always loved when the two of them were together. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Islands in the Stream is still yeah. today the largest duet ever done. And you have somebody that you work with that sort of takes on the persona of Dolly Parton as well, right? We're, we're working on a show uh, with a lady named Wendy T. Uh, met her. We did two weeks together at Ship Shawana. And uh, Mr. Doug Church uh, has a, a salute to the stars. He is known as the voice of Elvis. My goodness. I mean, if you, if, if and the look, he, I mean, he does it all. He's a showman. Yeah, and won two of those major awards, you know, of all those Kenny uh, Rogers, there's not that many, but of the Elvises, thousands. And he won two of those major awards. And he he contacted me and said, we're, we're doing some shows and said, we'd like to plug you in. Would you would you be willing? I said, absolutely. And it was there that I met Miss Wendy T. Now, she is one of the top three dollars in the country. Hmm. I mean, in the top three doing it for 30 plus years wow and she is dolly all day long through and through right i mean it's and it's she never turns it off she's yeah. spontaneous all day long man it's that's and, incredible and, uh, and she's so fun to do stuff with kenny if you remember the the christmas specials and things that they used to do oh, together yes you remember those yeah those were great great shows and and you look forward to it you know, each Christmas, them doing a program together, the Christmas shows that they did. But, you know, a lot of people may not know this. The uh, Islands in the Stream, which was the biggest duet of all time. So far, nobody's surpassed that in duets. Was written by one of the Bee Gees. You know, that's right. Because I think they have sung it. I remember Andy Gibb doing uh, for it. Very I, I, I think one of the telethons that might have been the muscular just for Jerry Lewis, because yep. there's a clip you can see online where he's singing it, you know, during the telethon with Marie Osmond. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, they're singing it okay. together. Yeah. Yeah. So so he wasn't going 
to do the song. He had done it for like three days, and he said, I'm just not getting this song. And he, he was ready to drop the song. And they said, they called, they called Dolly in and said, Dolly said, he's working on this song. And, and what do you think? And she just kind of fiddled through the song. She's, oh, come on, Kenny, we can do this. And bang, magic happened. And if you look the song up, it's not a Kenny Rogers song. No, it's only it's a it's a Dolly Parton song. It's a Dolly Parton song. It's amazing. It's and you know anything she touches is gold. Here in Tennessee, if she ran for a president, she'd get it. I mean, she's oh, yeah. so well beloved, talented and beloved, and and funny and affable and just you know, um, she's the real deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. She, she is the real deal. Yeah, um, real how'd you guys deal. come up with the name? Is it tied to the fact that it is a tribute to Kenny Rogers, the real deal band? Well, it's a great, great name. Here's here's how that came. We were doing a show at, in Fredericksburg, Texas at the Rock Box. And uh, Miss KK there uh, asked us to, uh, to do a couple of shows. We did a couple of shows for her. And uh, she she and I were driving back to the bus to get something, and she said, so tell me about your players. And I told them, and I, I said, you know, three of these guys are straight off the Grand Ole Opry. They play on the Opry, you know, frequently. And she said, so they're the real deal. And I said, yeah, they are. <laughs> they're the real deal band. That is so perfect. She penned is- it, and, you know. So that's how that came about, the real deal band. I can't, I can't imagine, and you think, it goes so good with an evening with the gambler. Our, our tour uh, is our show's called an evening with the gambler. And, and I want to pitch this. If you don't mind, if you, any of you are interested, if you're a, a talent buyer or, you know, have a convention or something coming up or a festival would like to get a hold of us, please check us out at an evening with the gambler.com one word and leave us uh, a message and we'll get back with you. We'd look forward to doing something with you and, and hopefully get to do some shows up that way. I, we, we've done some stuff in Wisconsin, did the Belfry, uh, the Rail Center, uh, did uh, Turtle Lake uh, around Geneva. We like Geneva, and, and now we're getting ready to go back, I think, maybe uh, in Ohio, do some, some stuff at the Ohio Theater, uh, did Chip Chihuahua. So we're really getting, it's kind of unusual, we're getting really popular up in uh, uh, the upper... Uh, upper Midwest, right? Upper Midwest, north northeast, up in that area. So we we're, we're doing some shows, and also Doug Church that he has that show that he does the Salute to the Stars. I'll be doing uh, the last three days of this year in December. We'll be doing a Kenny and Elvis show together. Wow! Uh, at Pittman, uh, the Broadway Theater, mm-hmm. and we're doing a couple of shows with him and Wendy. Uh, uh, that'll be a Kenny Dolly Elvis. Christmas That's a trifecta, right? I mean, it's a home run. Americana, incredible, huh? It's a home run, and it's it's they're fun to work with. They're professional, uh, and the people just eat it up. I mean, it's such great music. Now, do you have the clothing custom made to match his style, or are you able to find it off the rack? What's it like? Because you have to, you know, have that that look that he had with some of the uh, the styles of the the sport coats and the white suit and all the different ones. <laughs> so that's all these questions. You're you're really nailing some good questions, brother Jim. You are. I picked You're the right wrong. career, huh? <laughs> you, you you have found the right you, you found the right to plug to plug me there. Some of these can come off the rack, but you know it's interesting. The the seventies, you remember the dagger collar? Oh yeah, they're hard to find. They are, huh? I mean, right. There, that's a tough that high collar that they they wore back then is hard to find, and if you can find it, it's an expensive shirt. I mean, I, I've seen some of these shirts. To me, it's expensive. One hundred and thirty bucks for for a shirt that, you know, most people probably took off the rack and, 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 and put it yeah. into a bucket, you know, 40 years ago. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah, it's uh, the, most of my clothes I can find pretty local here in town. And we have several really good tailors uh, around Nashville that make a lot of the country music uh, uh, clothing. I'll, I'll tell you, we went into a, a nostalgic, uh, over oh, there like, a, like a vintage type place those yeah, are great yeah I and i found a suit my wife said try this suit on it looks it looks like it would fit you 
tried it on. It looked like it had, ta it was a tailor cut. You know, I mean, it was a beautiful jacket. And then we noticed on the hanger that it was hanging on the name Mel Tellis. Holy cow. Wow. It was a tailor cutted. It, it was tailor fitted for Mel Tillis. And then there were four more suits yeah. that weren't quite as up and snuffy as his was. But he had the whole band suit and his suit, and they had been given to the to them to sell uh, from the estate. So I now own the a whole three piece suit that belonged and was tailor cut to Mel Tillis, and it fits me perfect. That's amazing, huh? Yeah, that was cool, man. I mean, that was. That was that was really kind of cool, but uh, anyway, yeah, most of my clothes I can find uh, pretty local, but I am I'm still trying to to find those vintage shirts. They're kind of they're kind of tough, but uh, it's it's a fun thing to do. You asked the question, and I, I chased another rabbit. I'm bad about that. That's but, fine. But, hey, as long <laughs> as you catch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell I tell a joke uh, on on my my guy from Houston. He says. Uh, you know, said said he came to Tennessee and he wasn't familiar with the country. And I said, well, let's just get in the car and I'll, I'll drive you around in my old truck and we'll we'll look at the landscape and let you kind of get familiar. And he said, yeah, I said I think it's pretty. And uh, he's a, a, a rabbit ran across the road in front of us, and he's from Texas. And he said, was that a rat? <laughs> and I said, no, that was a rabbit. And he That's said, a rabbit. He was, he was kind of little to be out of the nest, wasn't he? And I said, no, he was full grown. I said, oh, wow. She said, you ought to see the rabbits we got in Texas, man. The ham off of one of our rabbits would feed a family of four. <laughs> so, that must go over well at Easter time. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, uh, Poor Peter uh, Cottontail. <laughs> a deer, a deer ran across the road in front of us. And he said, what was that, a goat? Yeah. I said, no, that was a buck deer. A pretty nice little eight-point buck. Yeah, man, you ought to see the bucks we got in Texas. Man, they look like Bullwinkle. So, <laughs> now, but this time, I'm kind of like, uh, mm -hmm. Texas, everything's bigger and grander, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. So then we come up on the mud turtle crossing the road. The mud turtle crossing the road. No so this is all in the same day, right? <laughs> Within a mile or so, there. So this mud turtle's crossing the road. And he said, what was that? I said, that was a tick. <laughs> Let that sucker bite you, buddy. You don't <laughs> <remember that. laughs> yeah. oh, then he wow. said, okay, I'm good. You win. <laughs> on the, on the, no more comparison. So um, have you heard from any of the Kenny Rogers super fans, Kenny Rogers, <laughs> fan clubs, Kenny Rogers family, anybody who has had an opportunity to see and celebrate what you're doing as you are keeping the spirit and the memory of a beloved figure in American entertainment and music alive through your performances, Justin. Well, I've, I have met a lot of people that have met Kenny Rogers or, or they have family that are related in some, some way or another. And uh, some of his family are still alive. I know that there's a, a brother, I think, that lives in Florida. Um, and I have reached out through word of mouth to try to, to get, you know, get one of them at least to, you know, just kind of give me an idea. Are we doing, are we on the right track? How close are I? Is there something I should work on differently? Um, love to get, you know, an endorsement from one of those, but so far I haven't got to meet them. I hope one day too. Um, I do understand this. Now it, this, this was scary, Jim. I'm not kidding you. This kind of shook me down just a little bit. Now here I'm, I'm uh, making an effort to try to do this this music, and, and people are enjoying it. We're having a good time doing it. And I think when you're enjoying doing something on stage, then the audience picks up on it, and it's a good time will be had by all. But we're we're doing this while I'm Facebook one, one day, and a Kenny Rogers thing comes up wanting to be friends. And this was as Kenny, Kenny Rogers. Roger, yeah. It was a Kenny Rogers thing, and, and so, I thought, yeah. it's your show. So I tapped on it. It's a Kenny Rogers. They're fixing to release another album. Really? Yeah. It's music it's that was unreleased? Yes. 
Wow. So there, his wife and uh, some of the producers that had worked with him in prior years uh, said, you know, we've got all this music in the can. It was never released. What do y'all think? So they're remastering a whole nother project. Uh, so you might want to check that out. And you can tell me you saw it here on Evening with the Gambler, you know, with you. With the Jim right. So it was, on the Jim Astor show. Yeah. That would be really, really exciting. How huh? people will be super stoked about that. You know, I mean, it, it, when that happens, you know, it's kind of like, wow, it's kind of like it's it's happening again. We're, we're getting another dose of that great uh, music that we so loved back in you know, the 70s and 80s. Um, all would, the movies. Which is, yeah, all the good stuff. Um, I, I would imagine, too, for your wife, if, uh, say, for example, you're performing with the band and uh, she's, she's off to the side there and she, you know, you come off stage and she's all excited. Uh, you know, you did a great job and very happy for you. And then, you know, when you're in the Kenny Rogers attire and you're, you're the spirit of Kenny, and then you give her a kiss. Um, is she cheating on Justin when she's kissing Kenny? <laughs> That's a I mean, is, is she is she married to two uh, <laughs> gentlemen? Know, that's, that's really something I have to chase a little farther. I'm going to, I'll probably pursue that. I mean, when she kisses you. Kenny, is she thinking of Justin? When she's thinking of Justin, she's thinking of Kenny? <laughs> hmm. well, that's a question answered, for you. She, she answered me across the room here. Did she, she answer? You. She said, I'm, I'm thinking of Justin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. That, so we good could, answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> you asked a question about, about the songs that, that we did have. You know, it's different everywhere we go. Yeah. Uh, is it? You, you customize it for each venue? Well, each, each crowd is a little different. We've uh, we found that well, we, one week we flew from, we flew the band. Uh, we all flew to Washington State to, uh, to Tacoma. We were in Tacoma, Washington and did. Uh, we sold out 1,700 seats at the uh, Emerald Queen, and um, within a day, we, we we were back on Virginia, in Virginia, to do uh, the Beacon Theater. So, I mean, that's that's both sides of the United States, you know, from East Coast to West Coast, almost from furthest point uh, to furthest point. And it was so interesting that you go from both sides of the country and we're doing the same music and and sometimes it's received different i've had men and women come up crying about a couple of songs that there's some really heart wrench there's one song I'll, I'll i'll share this with you there's one song that we do and you know we've, we're coming out of covid we're hoping you know things get back on track and people can get back out and be the social people that we've, we've always been here in our country and uh there's a song that Kenny did. It's called uh, Good Friends. And I lost a couple of friends a, a couple of years ago. And, and the song really gr kind of wrenches my heart. And a song that means that much to an artist that you sing, it transcends and it goes into the audience. They pick up on that and they will realize that their self and they will pick up on whatever your emotions are. They will start to feel those also. Yeah, absolutely. So we finished that song and finished that whole set. And I was in the back. We were doing a meet and greet. And I always, you know, the smiles and, and, and uh, selfies are free. That's, there's no charge for that. We enjoy doing that with folks. So anyway, so we're, we're back. And there's a lady that has another lady by the arm. She can't see good. I don't know if it's retina, retina pipitosis, possibly some retina issue, something. I, and the lady that, she, that has her by the arm looked at me and said, she can't see. Mm -hmm. and then she looked towards me and she said is this him mm -hmm. and she said yes and she looked right almost through me and yeah. she said you sang a song for me tonight and she began to tear i mean big tears crocodile tears rolling oh, out of yeah. you you sang a song just for me tonight she said i didn't know i needed to cry some more i said i'm sorry she said, I lost my best friend two weeks ago. Mm. And good friends. If you get a chance to pull that up, listen to the words of that song. You were a good friend. Why did you have to go? Just when I was getting to know you, I sing this song to show you were a good friend. They don't make them quite like you. 
And in my memory, you'll always be a good, good friend to me. Mm. Great words. Mm. And we began to leave. And I said, may I embrace you? I asked permission. She said, yes. And I got close to her and I said, may God give you the mercy. May God give you the strength to get through what you're going through. And, and put a hedge of protection around you. And, and I said, I'm so sorry for the loss that you suffered. But you know, it, 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 you know what that is, Justin? We've got a word around here at the, the Gym Master Show for that word. I was telling you before we went live, we call that lovity. That that's is right. Lovity. Hey. That is uh, Gym Master Show lovity there. And uh, the viewers have already said you're a lovity on the show, which is kind of cool, huh? You know, there's Tony's, oh, yes. Ellie's, Emmys, Grammys, all these awards you can get. But when you're called a lovity, man, that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Oh, down deep, man, down deep. You know, at our shows, you asked, and I like to do this. I want to be able to take people. I want to stretch their emotions. Yes. I want to be able to, to take them to the floor if they need to cry and let them cry. I want them to be able to laugh. I want them to be able to sing out loud along with us on something like Lucille or. Oh, yeah. Or Amber or something. And enjoy yourself. You know, they've paid money to see a good show to get away from the world for a little while and have a little bit of fun. Yes. And we want, them to, we want to stretch those emotions. If I can take somebody uh, to stretch their emotions, I feel like I've given them their money's worth, you know, with, especially with these songs. There's, there's the opportunity there for them to come out and kind of feel like, you know, get away demons. I've had a good time for a little while. You know? <laughs> so. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite of the songs that Kenny has uh, sung over the years? Is there is there one that is your personal favorite? You know, it that kind of changes along the way. Once yeah. in a while. You know, I mean, it, it, right now, I'd say "Buy Me a Rose." Mm. It's one of my favorite songs. Uh, it, I'm, it's a shame it kind of came along so late in his career because uh, it's such a great song. Uh, uh, are you familiar with that song at all? Yes. Did you want to just uh, acapella a couple of lines or anything for the audience to remind them? I'd love to. Uh, it starts as uh, he works hard to give her all he thinks she wants. He thinks she wants now. Three car garage, her own credit cards. Lately, she try anything to turn his head. Would it make a difference if she said, buy me a rose, call me from work, open a door for me, what would it hurt? Show me you love me by the look in your eyes. These are the little things I need the most in my life. You know, it's... As men, it seems like we keep working so hard to try to accomplish those big, you know, get her a bigger car, get her a bigger credit card. That's not what they want. We're not talking the same language. That's not what life's about, right? Open the car door for her. Yeah. You know, show her a little love that way. Buy her a rose. You know, something simple. It's not that hard. We make it harder than it is. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's on us guys. So that song right now kind of, Speaks to you. Yeah. Kenny uh, really uh, was so good at, at having songs that really spoke to people in a very connecting, real, humanistic way. He really dug in deep. Even the songs that were fun, uh, they, they just, people felt very connected with them and with him as a result. And he would have fun with the audience too. Yeah. It was never, you know, a stiff situation. I've been to his concerts, as I mentioned, I had an opportunity to meet and chat with him through work with PBS. And he was just, as everybody would hope, funny, warm, affable, welcoming, just a, a regular guy who just happened to be a superstar. And what was great about it is from, you know, interactions that I had and from others that I've talk to and i'm sure you'll agree he might have been a, a major superstar in the entertainment uh, and music worlds but he didn't act like one he was still kenny he was still a regular 
guy that, you know, would like to enjoy life and, you know, and went through the ups and downs of life uh, and spoke about it as everybody did. So he um, and everybody does from time to time. He was a, a real person that people related to on many levels, right? Well, and uh, I just finished his autobiography, um, which is a great book. If you get a chance to read it, uh, it gives you the if, if you're a Kenny Rogers fan, you want to know more about him. That really kind of delves into to who he was. And I wanted to read it because I wanted to kind of get into his mindset, how he felt about life, where his view came from on some things, where he stands with what was important to him. And uh, I think that comes through maybe in the music that he did. That, that he was a storyteller and used music to do it. So these songs, uh, Coward of the County, you know, that's a story. And uh, I, I introduced by me, you, you asked, which was my favorite song. When we get ready to do by me, I was, I usually sit down on a stool and I say, you know, there was an interview done several years ago. There was uh, Dan Rather has a, a show called the big interview. And I've watched a few of those episodes and one Kenny Rogers was on. And he asked this question, just the same question you're just now floating around. He said, how do you have such a talent? Where do you get such a gift to be able to pick such wonderful music? And he said, here's how that works. And this is the most perfect answer I could imagine. And he said it this way. He said, a beautiful country love song should say what a man should say and a woman wants to hear. And every woman in the room that I'm singing, it's like their their heads are on a string. Yeah, they're just they're they're loving it. Yeah, they're they yeah. eat that stuff up, and it's that's that's the magic of a great country love song is that it should it it should say what a man should say, and a woman wants to hear. And if you can meet that, then you've got a great country love song. Have you uh, written songs as well along the way over the years? Yes. Matter of fact, I've, I've had a couple of songs. Oh, you mentioned published. that. Yes. In the beginning. That's right. You did mention. Yeah. That's oh, what are the names of them? Maybe people dig them out oh, and look for them. Wow. I haven't looked at any of the material in a long time. One, Anything one the, released on uh, album, you know, that's just your own before the whole Kenny Rogers tribute. I have done a couple of albums. Um, did one with a group called the Mount Zion Singers. We did some songs. Uh, some of that we published ourselves, and then some uh, with a group called Hosanna, which uh, I was proud oh, of. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I had a song that came out on that yeah. that uh, he was thinking of me, uh, and then a group in North Carolina picked it up. It was kind of reminiscent of a Cathedral Quartet type team. One of the uh, when I was uh, you know I've worked at a lot of different TV stations, radio stations, on the air, behind the scenes, TV networks, all of it, radio networks, and one of the very first commercial um radio stations aside from you know college and everything was working actually in new york out east on long island for a uh, christian radio station and that's where i learned about the sandy patties yeah. and the michael w smiths and bb and cc winans and amy grants yeah. and all these uh ralph carmichael's and all of these uh, amazing artists and musicians and uh, really extraordinary and some of the best Christmas music too comes out of that area. Uh, some really, really cool stuff. So a lot of these names you're talking about because that was the first station uh, as far as radio professionally that I had worked with. Um, I recall a lot of these names. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you one of my favorite songs to do uh, when, when we do the Christmas show with Dolly uh, was a Mark Lowry tune, which I think is probably our greatest uh, Christmas song. I don't, I don't know if we can even put a category uh, in a category uh, that he did. Uh, Mary, did you know? Uh, what a great song! And I, don't, I think it's Mary. The, did you know? That's a good song. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. I think it's maybe the biggest Christmas song of our generation. It's a great one. Yeah, I think before that it was what White Christmas, Bing Crosby. <laughs> I would say that's right. You know, so and yeah. then you know, all the way back in the Hark the Heralds and, and those songs. But do you do Christmas? I love Christmas. Do you, do you guys do a Christmas version of the show? 
what we've got uh, in the salute to the stars that I do with Doug Church, uh, it's at Christmas time. So we do a couple of something like uh, Silent Night. We do that. Yeah. We do because uh, he had some great Christmas albums out, Kenny Rogers, yeah, and absolutely. there's a terrific one he did that was re-released that we have here. That is uh, Kenny with Dolly singing together, which is terrific. Uh, I'll be home with bells on. Uh, that's another one of the Kenny Dolly's tunes. Yeah. Uh, really neat little tune. Real feel good stuff, right? Get yeah. you into the holiday spirit. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I do. Uh, uh, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to draw a blank here on you. Uh, I do a uh, white Christmas. Yeah. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I do that yeah. song. That's a beautiful uh, one. So, and Kenny did the song. So I was able yeah. to listen to his version and glean from how he may would approach that team. But uh, it, it's a lot of fun. It, we have a great time. The guys that I'm out with tell some great stories of, of being out on the road with the country music artists that they were on the road with. Um, and several times uh, we'll get approached that they realize, you know, the people in the audience say, oh, I remember this song and you played on that album, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes. To be able to have that kind of horsepower behind me. Is, behind you, right, exactly. And some of the, the tales and stories that they can tell and share. You know, you've also been, you know, celebrating Kenny Rogers. There you go. Look at that shot. There he is. There he is. I didn't know you had that, man. You just, yeah. Isn't you that great? Thing. <laughs> we we do our homework. You're right. Exactly. Isn't that a great shot of Kenny uh, Rogers star there? Hmm. He is down in Hollywood. That's my <laughs> star. <laughs> There's your star there. The, right. There's Kenny with his star. <laughs> Me, Kenny Rogers. And then there's yours. And <laughs> huh? How cool well, is that? I, my goodness, man. You're impressive. And the Look whole, at you. The whole you, have, you have been all. We've been digging. Support. We've been doing. Absolutely right. You so. Agree. Wow. I, I I love these shots too of you guys all sort of in that gambler sort of attire and the whole look. Um, okay, and I'll tell you real quick. The lady cool. to my right, yeah, is my wife. Now that that's uh, camera right, right? So with the one that's yeah. looking at you or the one that's looking straight and at us at my right arm. Oh, looking at you, yeah. yeah. That's my wife. Wow. That's fantastic. I did good, didn't I? Oh, yes, you did. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a great, these are great shots that we've got here. So, um, we've been married yeah. 43 years. How many? 43. 43 years. Yes, Congratulations. That is incredible. That is really, really beautiful. Yeah, two daughters and three grand, uh, yeah, three grandchildren. Two All right. Go ahead. Oh, look, there's the Dolly. That's Dolly, and that's Doug Church. Uh, he is a. Uh, These are the ones you're talking about, right? Teaming that's up with that. the Elvis that, and the Dolly. That was actually at Ship Shawana. And that's Dolly. She is she is a firecracker. I'm not kidding. You. I was going to say, yeah, maybe we'll get her on the show too. And there's, have there's some actually fun some connect. talk about doing five weeks in Australia next year. Wow. Yeah. With, you know, um, Ship Shawana is a word you definitely don't want to foul up live on air. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad day. That, that would be, uh, what did he just say? <laughs> that would be a bad day. But this is, uh, this, she does look like Dolly there, huh? I mean, I mean. You know, you know who we had on the show recently? Um, phenomenal uh, friend of our show, Donna Presley, Elvis Presley's cousin. Yeah. was just with us recently as well and shared some wonderful, uh, beautiful Elvis stories. In case anybody missed that episode, you can see that as well. But, uh, you know, um, what are some things that you, in paying homage to the, and again, folks, if you're just tuning in, he is going to sing for us as well, uh, which is a blessing. Uh, what are some things and, and deeper appreciation for the man, Kenny Rogers, that you have acquired and developed taking on his persona and, and sharing his music. Uh, you knew him as Kenny Rogers, the star and great voice and all the rest. But then as you immersed yourself in sort of recreating the spirit of 
this legend. What are some of the things, Justin, that you have learned about him along the way that you're preaching? I'll give you an attribute. When I first started this, I didn't realize how impressive he was on people. The impression that he left with people, uh, they come up, and it's such a humbling experience for people to come up and just go, oh my gosh, you know, all those songs, it just really ripped my heart. I remember where I was at when I heard that. That was our favorite. Maybe somebody used it in their wedding or they played this at a certain time. That's when I met my husband or my wife. And 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 it's, it's uh, awe-inspiring to realize I'm bringing back memories to people that, that matter. These are events in their life that, that really have changed. And, and for me to step into that frame which I, I'm never going to be him I know that but it allows me to just see a window just into what that was like to be that man to be that respected that revered by people when when I walk into a room and they see me it's on it, it it's almost like the temperature changes in a room it's like oh wow he's here and you yeah. realize why wow, he had that kind of presence to command a room um, in that book I was telling you about that he had written uh, when I think we are the world or something that we that he was doing was coming up yeah. a lot of artists had gotten together and they were all in a room and we, nobody really did vote on who was going to be the spokesman or who was going to be that and then Kenny walked in and as soon as he walked in there wasn't a need for a vote everyone knew who was going to take command Kenny Rogers Mm. just start saying here's how this is going to flow and he, and he's it wasn't that he asked for it it was just expected because he yeah. was Rogers. yeah that's, that's weight that's weight to carry you know when you when you are revered in that respect and i don't deserve it because i didn't live that life i didn't make myself um as famous as he did he 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 ventured into territory nobody had been he yeah. Go this far, and I have said this to people: Kenny Rogers was the Elvis Presley of pop country. Yeah. He was the Elvis Presley of pop country. He took country to a different place. Um, not condemning Johnny Cash music or Wayne well Jennings. I love all those guys, but to take the music that he did to meet with Lionel Richie, yeah, and come up with Lady. Right, which, yeah, which is a spectacular, right? you know. They're, yeah. they're up, those are that and the Gambler are probably the two biggest hits that people recognize. Uh, just as soon as you start them, they know, everybody knows that. Everybody Could you imagine knows. all the music that wouldn't exist if there was no Kenny Rogers and no Dolly Parton? Because yeah. they did cross into lots of other styles and genres of music and worked collaborated with other artists who come from different frames of mind and backgrounds and and that's the beauty of what these folks have been able to do and contribute to the music scene for all of us right absolutely well you know and people may not know this uh dolly parton has just been uh, introduced into the rock and roll hall of fame and she's producing, she's right now in the works of making a rock and roll album. I, I'll get this wrong. I know, and I, I hope I don't mess it up. Um, Bob Seger, I think, is involved with this. Wow. Um, I mean, some some true rock and tough, roll people. But she's, people. Made, she's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How cool is that, huh? You know, I mean, really? Yeah. Have you been there? Have you been to Cleveland? Have you seen that place? It's like a it's like a triangle. It's a really cool place, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That that would be cool. I, maybe maybe I'll get to see that. Um, yeah. That's the, one more reason me and my wife are doing this is we get to see this country. You get to see the country, right? Yeah, we get to see this country. We get to travel to places and 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 we're very. I want to say this for everywhere we've been so far, from Washington State to Virginia to Wisconsin. Ohio, in Indiana, the different places. We haven't been anywhere that people didn't treat us wonderful. Everywhere we've been, people have been just marvelous to take care of us. 
That's the rooms, crazy. the food, the, everything yeah. is gone. That's incredible. And of all the places you've been, your favorite has been the Gym Masters show, right? You know, I, this was a hallmark. This was one of those boxes on my on my list. If I can get to do the Gym Masters show, uh, I, I know you're we're, we're cutting up here, but this has really been great, and I I, I really appreciate uh, Jim, John hooking you and I up. Uh, well, I, I tell you, I, I really hope that, um, you know, either I'm there or you're here on the East Coast, Northeast area, because I'd love to see you perform, love to see you do your thing, because I can only, you know, just imagine from what I've heard as well, that it's a warm evening, it's a fun evening, there's a lot of great music, you play with the audience, and everybody feels better about their day and about their lives in hearing you and the real deal band knock it out of the park thank you and I'll, I'll tell you it you know and i hate here i'm using the very word that i don't like hate there's so much hate today i don't care where you turn there's hate 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 let's love a little while let's fall back in love a little while you isn't know, it hate. amazing that one of the worst words on the planet hate is a four-letter word and one of the greatest words on the planet, love, is a four-letter word. How ironic that is. <laughs> yeah. It's all a matter about choice in life, right? It is. And we have Making that choices. And we have, yes. Did you want to grace us with uh, some uh, fabulous sound, my friend? We'd be glad to. And I'll tell you what I'm going to I've got. I've got a track here. I'm about to do uh, next week. I go to the Sunburst uh, Music Convention down in Florida. Oh, cool. and they used to do a, a, a little number or so here and i've kind of took uh two songs and made one combined it yeah so that i can can kind of do a, a medley here call that a uh yeah at one time it would be a medley and now it's what called a mashup <laughs> true, true. We went from medley to mashup right too true too true that, that is cool are you ready you want to hear one we are ready yes our special guest on the gym master show do your sort of your i do a lot of emceeing so uh coming to us from nashville tennessee our very special guest the extraordinarily talented and gifted justin sullivan as kenny rogers live enjoy To this one, and I think everybody will want to sing along. Just sing along, have a good time. Friend, that is fantastic. <laughs> and I tell you, you really do tran transport us back to the time when Kenny was with us, in, in not only in the sound, but also in your smile and your uh, facial expressions, your mannerisms, uh, the, the smoothness of the delivery all is is kenny and i think that's that's not so easy to master you know you are justin but yet you do morph into his uh persona which i think is uh which is amazing and a lot of our uh viewers they've been commenting throughout the show but they're they're loving it as well and uh look at all these great comments and just oh wow School stuff. Lovity on the Gym Masters show with our audience, our worldwide international audience uh, that I'm watches okay. and follows yeah. us. Those who are commenting, those who are just watching. And hey, gang, if you're enjoying this, give this episode a like, leave a comment on our YouTube channel underneath the episode in the comments section, not just here in chat hall here, but also in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know you love what we're doing. And um, when you are performing these legendary songs what's happening to you are you transported to another time and place what's running through your veins as you are performing in his persona these iconic kenny rogers songs i'll, I'll tell you the first first couple of shows one i was nervous and i was trying to remember how to hold my mic where it looked more like the way that he would do it trying to you know, work on the mannerisms, walk the stage, try to make sure that the audience is enjoying yourself. And now it's become more, it's just the way you do the song. It's, it's the way it's supposed to be done. And it's a more natural uh, feel to the song. And when you do that, and when you become natural, and it becomes a natural reflex to just do this, or 
you know, hold the eyebrows up and grab the mic and, and love on the mic. It was kind of like he was embracing somebody when he would do that. And he was such a, uh, he was gifted uh, at mic technique. Uh, you know, you may have saw him drop his mic way down, almost to his belt at some point. It was because he was hitting such a high note that he was blasting. He was blowing as hard as he could go to get that high note. And then he would, then he would pull it back up for the growl that laid, uh, to put the growl in. He had to get you know, close to it. And then once in a while, you would see him turn his head and do that. To turn his head. You know, he would, he would do that. And he made it look uh, like it was cool. Yeah. It, it was just all these cool mannerisms. But it was actually to involve mic technique. See, like you do there, see? <laughs> yeah. You're doing it. <laughs> Why you do your homework? I am. <laughs> My goodness, Jim, you are sharp, dude. I tell you, you see, word on the street is come on the Jim Masters show. You're part of the Loverty family. I That's love it. it. There you it. are. They are doing it right there, belting it out, too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, see how he's doing the mic? I mean, it's, he it makes it look so it's, cool. It's all in. Yeah, it's all, it's all in. It's 110%, yeah. right? He, I, that's exactly right. He he doesn't do a show. I never saw any of the video that I've watched. I've tried to study uh, the rounds, the round uh, stage that he had uh, that he did with uh, I think Sheena Easton and Dolly Parton. Uh, I've watched all of those videos. Uh, the Music City, uh, Motor City Music thing that he did there was a call. Oh, yes, right. You remember that? Yes. Still alive? Yeah. Yeah. I so saw. I've got that on video. I, I studied and watched that. So, uh, yeah, he was such gift. He was so gifted to be able to, to just make it look comfortable. And I think at that point and at that level, yeah, he wasn't stressed anymore. He was no. just enjoying himself. People were eating it up. Yes. They were doing the music they wanted to hear. It yep. transcended. It, it took them to a whole nother place. Yes. You know, and it took your mind away from whatever last week's worries were for just a little while. And what a gift to be able to give somebody to relieve them of a burden for just a little while. You know, it's amazing too. The, the women absolutely appreciate, you know, his, his music and his style and love him as well. But he also earned the respect of the guys, the gentlemen yes. too, because they knew, you know, that he was a, a good guy, you know, a regular guy. He was authentic. It was the real deal name of your band. Uh, that he, there was no airs about him. He was, so he earned the respect of so many different um, types of people, including the respect of, which is very difficult to master, the music industry itself. Yeah. So he garnered the respect of uh, men, women, uh, young and old, and the industry, which is uh, quite you know, rare. You don't always get it from no all sides. A know? lot of artists uh, get. I'm sorry, this is an old old style way of saying it. The big head. Yes. They get the big head, like it's all about them. But Kenny, and in the book that I read about him in his biography, nobody that worked with him walked away feeling like they were belittled. They all felt equal. They all felt like it was an honor to work with him. There was no issues. Uh, right. Nobody had a bad word really to say about the man. As far as I could tell, he always got along. Sure now, I, you you like uh, uh, little nits. I, I'm going to give you one here. This came out of the book. I didn't know this myself, but this this is cute. So Lucille comes out, big hit. Oh, man, it yeah. just transcended everything. Brought him really brought him to the dance. Right. So here, pick the fine time. Believe me, Lucille. So he gets. He gets this big song going. He comes home and his mother's there and he greets his mom. Hi, mom. Good to be back home. And she flogged him. I mean, she came undone on him. What do you mean saying that I let y'all go hungry? What do you mean running off from your, what are you talking about? I didn't do that. She said, mom, 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 it's not about you. Kenny Rogers' mother's name was Lucille. <laughs> And she thought that he was telling family secrets about no food and uh, laundry on the floor and <laughs> the whole spell. And he, so she, he said, "Mom, it's not about you." So 
when his father passed away, he bought her a bus and a driver, paid a driver to drive her around on a bus named Lucille. How cool is that? <laughs> she, she lo this is this. I love these little tidbits, right? Oh, yeah. This is where the juice is, right? Yeah. So you you know, we actually have a graphic for that. It's called a JMS exclusive. <laughs> See, uh, we're on top of it here. We dude, are dude, on top dude. of it. <laughs> you are high tech, dude. I can see this. So, she loved to fish. Kenny Rogers' mother loved fishing as yeah. much as any man. Yeah. So, she had a fishing pole and a red jumpsuit, or orange jumpsuit, that she had on the bus. And she's cruising around the United States, just driving up and down the road. And she sees a farm pond. And she makes the bus driver pull over, not just once, frequently. We are going to stop here and now. Yeah. And she puts the jumpsuit on. She crosses barbed wire fences with this little fishing pole. And she starts fishing in people's farm ponds around the United States. And she never got caught. Nobody ever you know, turned her into the game warden or anything like that. But it, can you imagine? Yeah. In your farm and some ladies out there in a red jumpsuit fishing in your farm. Right? <laughs> now, that, that gives you the background of who Kenny was. Yes. It helps you understand he came from humble means. Yeah. You, you, we, we were talking about this, this uh, Doug Church's show, The Salute to the Stars. There's three common things that if you really look at either one of these people, you look at, look at Elvis Presley, poor. Right. Very poor background. Elevated to heights. Yes. That the world that very ever rarely saw. Right? Dolly Parton. Same thing, yeah. Of many colors. Poor, poor, poor family. Poor background. Kenny Rogers was raised in one of the poor sections of town. They were in a housing development. And it was said in the book that Kenny, he didn't see colors. Right. He wasn't. He he wasn't uh, somebody that was prejudiced at all. They were people who lived there with him, so he didn't he didn't have any issues. When he sang the song "Reuben James," and some people might get offended by what because it says he was a uh, no count sharecropping colored man. I'm gonna tell you something. In the end of that story, he is very revered because he was the man that took the poor white child that nobody else wanted and raised right. him as his own right he's the hero in that song right so you know I, it, and i just got a cold chill over my body mm -hmm. saying that you know that's love right that's love. Reuben james he had a bible in uh, uh said he was looking for a soul with a bible in his right hand he said turn the other cheek there's a better world waiting for the meek mm-hmm in my mind, these words remain for Reuben James. He loved him. Yeah. And that, that boy was, you know, so what a great storyteller, right? Here we go right back in. He was one of probably the best storytellers this country has ever had, using songs to do it. Really terrific at it, I know, in so many different levels. And, and we say all the different styles of songs, too, he could take on just so much. And it really is... Uh, extraordinary uh, why do you love what you're doing you're in a sweet spot right now with uh these opportunities to take on the persona uh of somebody legendary. as iconic as the legendary kenny rogers what is that feeling like for you it's probably hard to even put in words just it, it how do you i mean to step to step into the the full life, it took that man the full life to accomplish everything that he did. And for somebody like myself, that I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just an old country boy. Uh, built houses for a living when I was raised. That's, that's what I had to do for a living and, and, and hard, hard work. And to be able at this late time of my life, I'm 63. Uh, I'm broke down. I've had a lot of surgeries, but I'm still able to go and get up and enjoy life what little I can. And if I, and my wife would say this too, it's in my blood, I think, to entertain. It always has been. And to put a smile on somebody else's face, that's a paycheck to me. If you can make somebody else 
if you can turn a frown upside down and put a smile on somebody's face, and what better music to do it with than Kenny Rogers music? To go out and be able to, to do I feel those shoes? Absolutely not. But I do bring back a memory. I do want to do that. I want to be able to bring back the memory of the, the, the legendary Kenny Rogers, the songs that he did and performed that you asked me early on, had I, had I been a fan all my life? I remember when I was in high school, his stuff coming out and people listening at it in school when rock and roll was really, you know, as a teenager that that's, but his stuff still was there. It was still, it still resonated. It still carried. And, you know, you remember probably where he originated with the, uh, uh, first edition, mm -hmm. psychedelic music, you know, well, get this. Did you realize Ru uh, Ruby, the song Ruby came off? That was one of his uh, first edition songs. That's right. That's you know? right. Right. And who wrote that song? Yeah. Mel Tillis. Mel Tillis. I own Mel Tillis. <laughs> it's, life is full circle, isn't it? It's full circle. Isn't that crazy? There's a reason for everything. I own a suit. Say. I own a suit, tailor cut suit by the man that wrote Ruby that Kenny Rogers that I'm performing wrote. And Ruby. you want to hear another full circle? Sure. You're a guy who for years built houses. These yeah. are temples for people. This is their place of comfort and warmth where they have their family, where they, you know, sort of can get away from the craziness of life and they can go into their home and work in their yard and safety and, and pleasure. You're still doing that because you create a home for the folks who come to enjoy an evening with the gambler to enjoy the real deal band to enjoy justin as kenny rogers and they're you're creating a second home in these venues and one that's a place of comfort and joy and humor and and uh entertainment and warmth it's uh there's this there's a thread there jim i i hadn't put that together before you hadn't been on the Jim Masters show before. <laughs> you may have to do this more often. You, yeah, once a week, right? Come by and yeah, sing us some songs. And I think I can use this. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling. It's the way I, it's the way I think. I always. I like to. I love I see, it. I see life as a train, and there's every track piece counts, and it's a puzzle, and all these things are connected. Every person we meet, everything we experience. There, there's a thread, there's a connectivity there if we just take time to look at it. And here you are, a gentleman who bought, who built houses for people, which is something that people work all their life to have. And it's a place of safety and comfort and joy and entertainment and pleasure. And, and you're, you're creating a house for them to come to to forget about all their troubles and honor Kenny and have a good time. Do, so. do you, uh, have you ever heard the term kindred spirits? Absolutely. I use it a lot. Yeah. Oh, do you? You're, you're feeling well, that? Are you? I mean, yes. I, yeah. Somebody yeah. you never met. This is our first time to be together at all. Your first time, right? Exactly. And yeah. and what is it? Sometimes you run into somebody once in a while, you feel like, man, I could tell him my whole life story. Yes. And, and with the confidence, you know, that, it would You're be a, a safe place, right? I, I feel like I've made a new friend in this old world. You have absolutely, yeah. You definitely oh, have, my friend. And uh, you know, it's so. There's reasons why people are brought together. There's a reason why this connection has been made, and why you're on the show, and why we're honoring Kenny, and uh, why you're honoring Kenny. And I think it's a it's a beautiful thing. And just think about it, my. First initial of my name is J. Yours is J. Your wife's is J. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason for everything. <laughs> well, Jim, you could be reaching and grabbing the things now. I don't know. <laughs> right now, that might be a little bit of a. Uh... You know, I've got, I've got four fingers on one hand. I've got four fingers on the other hand. Now, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're gonna lift any, lift the right one. <laughs> I still, I still know how to mash a finger every once in a while. You know that that was. Oh boy, that's from tonight. what? Is that from picking or plucking? That was actually from a goat. Now that 
There is another, believe it or not. Is that the goat that was the one that the guy saw earlier? (laughs) (laughs) I actually have uh, right around 60 head of sheep and probably 20 or so goats. And and I'm my shepherd in some respect, a beekeeper. I've got some honeybees. Uh, So I'm a a farm boy uh, and I enjoy that life. I've I've always have. I was raised, I I milked cows when I was a kid. Uh, I think there's a lot of commonality between me and Kenny Rogers as I've read into him. He was raised a country boy. He was he, uh, was raised, uh, you know how he learned harmony? It was in church. That's he right. heard his sister singing something that wasn't lead. It wasn't the soprano part. And he said, what are you doing? She said, it's something called harmony. Harmony. And he said, I want to learn that. Yeah, harmony is well, great. That's, that's where he learned harmony was in church. Yeah. Dolly Parton. Yeah. A lot of her stuff is church-oriented stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, I've, I want to tell you how much I've enjoyed just being on your show. This has been a fantastic show. Uh, I hope you invo- would invite me back again sometime. Could we do that? I always say on the show, we are going to keep the porch light open and on for the guests. So they're going to keep that porch light on for you, Kenny. I mean, Justin, <laughs> you are welcome back anytime. And, and I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you, sir. Oh, it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. I, I appreciate the opportunity to to have done these songs, and uh, uh, I hope that when it, when we're in your area, people yes. can, can say, "Hey, we we heard him on the Jim Master Show. We want to go see that show." And uh, absolutely, if there's anybody that uh, you know, if you know a venue owner, uh, somebody that has a uh, venue coming up or something, a venue that they would like an entertainer to come. Oh in, yeah, be glad to bring the real deal band, and we'll put on a show you'll remember. And Absolutely. Now, if you remember in the Kenny Rogers uh, concerts, he would come out a lot of times and toss tambourines. That's right. Do you remember that? Yes. So we toss frisbees that have an evening with the gambler on them, and we toss the frisbees in the audience. I was scared of the tambourines. I was afraid it would get you know somebody might catch one in the somebody floor. might get one right in the head. <laughs> Well, that'd be a bad day, you know. Then you might not appreciate having to call an ambulance for the gash. Yeah, so we toss them a little frisbees out, and uh, sometimes during the song "Buy Me a Rose," I give out a rose or so uh, to somebody in the audience. Uh, but we encourage people nice. to participate, sing along, especially like Lucille or something. As long uh, as you're singing the same song as we are, right? Sometimes it does veer <laughs> off a little bit, right? <laughs> You're doing, if we're doing Lucille and you're doing Coward of the County, the guy in front of you would probably say, you know, could you do a different song? Please? Yeah, Not yeah. Can you pause until the song ends and then join yeah. later? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you hold it? Wait till the applause starts and then sing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> An evening with the gambler.com is the website to check out Justin Sullivan and the Real Deal Band. This was the real deal, my friend. Spread the word about the Gym Masters show series to everybody you know. This episode uh, live right now is going to be archived. So anybody uh, missed it live and they want to see it again and they want to uh, share it, it's on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. I encourage folks to give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. It doesn't cost anything. And and Justin, continue uh, blessings to you and your family as well and uh uh, this was a great conversation a lot of fun thanks for singing and performing for our viewers they absolutely loved it as well the the lovely viewers watching around the world and uh thanks for picking somebody that uh so many people have admired and making him a part of your life and sharing and interpreting the music uh to keep us entertained and grounded and having a good time justin Good stuff. And thank you for the opportunity to have done this. Uh, I, I know here in Tennessee that uh, I put it out on Facebook that we're going to be doing this this afternoon. And I know oh, you got right. some viewers here. And uh, I hope that some of the viewers that have watched will send you a comment that uh, we're from Nashville and we enjoyed your show tonight. And we, we look forward to seeing some more episodes of the Jim Masters show. And Jim, you are masterful. I appreciate that. You're very, you're, I, I have, I've been interviewed a few times now. I don't know if I've enjoyed one much more. 
than they appreciate that. As I say uh, multiple times on this show, and I've said it even before I started this show, my father, you know how sometimes dad or mom could always give you this uh, really cool sort of adult-like advice when you're a kid. And the audience that follows us all the time knows what I'm probably going to say, that I was probably eight or nine maybe when my father said to me, Jim, or Jimmy, because he's Jim, and I'm like the fifth James, oh. Jim, Jimmy, um, piece of advice. Now I'm like eight, nine years old, but it is hold, held true throughout. Anytime anybody says something nice or kind to you or about you, ask them, thank them, of course, and then ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, you know, I like Whoever it. management is, wherever they are, just make sure that those comments get in that envelope and get straight to management. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how lazies are made. It's the way the uh, world works. <laughs> you know, you're, you're talking about old wisdom. Before my wife and I married, my great grandmother was still living. And I went to her and I wanted to meet my fiance, my wife to be. And I said, grandmother, great grandmother, would you tell me, we called her Mamma, and it was very endeared, you know, to be able to call her Mamma. Sure. Everybody loved Mamma, sweet, sweet, kind, spirited lady. And she said, uh, I said, would you please tell us something that we can tell our grandchildren mm. that came from you? Right. Your great, great grandmother. Yeah. Her great, great, great grandmother. She said, I'll do better than that. I said, what's that? She said, I'll tell you what your great grandfather's grandfather told us before we got married. Now, I wanted to hear this, right? This had yeah. to be, right? And you'll find this to be the truth, and it still holds today. He said, it's okay for y'all to get mad, fuss a little at once in a while. Just don't do it at the same time. Right. <laughs> that is great advice. That is terrific. Six <laughs> generations ago, man. It's okay to get mad and fuss a little once in a while. Just don't do it at the same time. Just don't do it all at the same time. Because then it's like a flood or a fire. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. that. I love telling Oh, that. great things like that when you look at the family history and you pass down. Oh, yeah. My my mother uh, my mother's grandmother, she came over from Sweden and uh, they settled in New England, Boston and that area. And uh, she told me that the way that they used to teach the the kids, and now my mother comes from a big family. It's like the youngest of, she's, she's the youngest of like 16. So it's a big family. And the, it would be my great grandmother. So her grandmother, her mother's mother, used to want to teach all the kids posture, perfect posture. Okay. And the way to do it yeah. was they had to balance a book on their head and walk with the book, and the book couldn't slip off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Try, you try. know, I remember, I remember that. I didn't know it was your great grandmother that taught that. So that was grandma. That was great grandma Hilma. Yes, she did it. Hilma, <laughs> that's well, it. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite positions was standing in the corner. So, that <laughs> <laughs> so you would have been good in either center field, left field, or right field. <laughs> I played right field in baseball. See, that was it. You're all set up. My wow. friend, this was awesome. Thanks for uh, giving us uh, a feeling of uh, the spirit of Kenny Rogers and oh, the way yeah. that you do. And uh, you're a good, you're a good guy, Justin Sullivan. And uh, you're welcome back here at the Gym Master Show anytime. And uh, definitely spread the word. We'll continue to spread the word about oh, you yeah. and the band. And uh, we'll keep that light on for you. You're welcome back anytime. Okay. All right, Jim. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. You uh, all enjoy. your listeners all over the world, God the lovely viewers, the lovely. God bless all of you. Isn't that cool? You be well. Now you're gonna make a sandwich. <laughs> eat some lunch now. <laughs> gonna eat some lunch now, right? Exactly. You worked up an appetite. You sang for your supper. <laughs> you sang for your quick. You are quick. That's it. You be well, my friend. We'll chat again soon. And thanks for stopping by. The show it was a pleasure. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. All right. You take care.
Justin Sullivan coming to us from Nashville, Tennessee, or was it Kenny Rogers? Wow. What an uncanny uh, appearance. I mean, just the resemblance is extraordinary, right? And uh, the persona and the, the charm, the humor, and of course the voice. If you joined us late, he did sing for us here exclusively on the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. And it was a blast. Again, he and the gang, he's, he's surrounded by these accomplished Nashville musicians who've worked with some so many legends over the years themselves. Um, that is the Real Deal Band. And of course, their website is an evening with the gambler.com. And it's uh, it's quite a show. And uh, we're so excited that uh, that Justin wanted to come on the show. And uh, as we're celebrating, of course, Kenny Rogers, as I mentioned, I had a real treat and great honor to meet Kenny Rogers uh, in person, chat with him. That is Kenny there on the left. And this was, uh, you know, a couple of years back for a television special that was, and it was a concert event through my work with public television. Um, and it was just really a blessing. And we had such a great conversation, a lot of laughs, kind of like we did with uh, Justin today on this episode of the show. And again, uh, you know, they have such a great time together and the performances will... You're going to have to do a double take <laughs> when you're there. So keep an eye out for it. And, um, and, of course, get the music and, you know, pull out some of Kenny's stuff, too. And uh, just remember all of those hits and all that great music. I also like the fact that he was talking about uh, this trifecta of entertainment coming together with the tributes to um, Dolly Parton and Elvis Presley as well. That's going to be cool if that comes, uh, you know, to fruition as well. This was awesome, gang. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, a little quick homework for you, and we'd really appreciate it. There's a thumbs up uh, sign, a thumbs up, maybe not as fancy sparkly as this one, but it's on our YouTube channel. Give this episode a thumbs up. Leave a comment on the comment section. There's a comment section 24-7 on all the episodes. You can leave comments, not just when the show is live but you can actually post a comment underneath the episode that helps us get these episodes out to more people. When you do that, you're actually helping our show. When you give it a like and you leave a comment, we enjoy it. We value it. We appreciate it. We love to be interactive. It lets us know you're enjoying what we're doing, but also our platform for this series, YouTube also likes it and they take it and they see that people are enjoying these episodes and they will blast it out to even more. They open up the floodgates and more people get to see these shows in the series. So when you take two seconds to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment on the YouTube channel, it really helps our show that you enjoy so much. Thanks for all the great comments during Lovety Hall, uh, the chat room there, but also drop a comment on the actual channel. We would love that as well. Uh, of course, terrific. Uh, thank you very much, Kathleen. Everybody enjoying. And we want to acknowledge if we can, yes, there it is. We want to make sure uh, we have to say thank you to Maureen we to Paul. It's her birthday week, um, or a couple of days ago was her birthday. Uh, she is a September baby, just like yours truly. Mine's coming up uh, soon as well on the 24th. And um, she did a super chat. That's something you can always do when the shows are on live in the lovely whole chat room. There's these emojis. You can see super chat, super emoji, super stickers. So whatever the show is on, you can actually support the show and the content and everything that we do here with this, this incredible swath and a variety of guests we have from all different backgrounds, just like a traditional television talk show, you know, where the guests are coming from all different backgrounds, which I think is really cool. She did this kind and a nice green color there, super chat. And uh, that is uh, saying, Justin, you're a truly amazing human. You are uh, keeping Kenny alive for all of us, uh, yet adding your own twist to your performance. Thank you for existing. Thank you for existing. And she has said that a lot to, to me and to us here at the uh, show as well, which we really appreciate. So Maureen, thank you for your generosity and support of the Gym Masters Show Live series. Again, like, comment, subscribe, spread the word. Let us know how much you enjoy what we're doing here. We welcome all new viewers. If you're watching live, we welcome you. If you're watching this later, 
in the archives. We welcome you. Stop by and see us again. We always have a good time here. This is done like a celebrity talk show series, an entertainment show, uh, you know, an informative program. That's how we do it. It's not stale and stuffy interviews, even though we are interviewing. Um, we have a lot of interactivity. We'd like to have a good time here at Levity Hall and the Gym Masters show series. So we welcome all new viewers and we welcome, of course, our Levity squad, which continues to grow with so many people. And Crystal, thank you. Uh, good night, Jim. Justin Levity's. Uh, it's in the evening right now while we're doing this show. That's why they're saying good night to each other. Uh, thank you, Jim, for another amazing show. But then thank you, Crystal. People watch our series 24-7, 365, all days of the week and all times during the day. So whenever you're watching, just the fact that you're watching, we say thank you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Be sure and click the notification bell icon, little bell icon there, so you never miss any of the episodes. You'll get a little notification about all the episodes and the times and everything, so you never miss. And you can interact with us and be a part of the show here at the Gym Masters Show Live. For all of us here, this is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we appreciate you. We value you. And uh, we hope you have a good time with us. And stop by and come see us again right here in Levity Hall on the Gym Masters Show Live series. We love you all. Take care and be well. And this was a great show. It wasn't a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, great music, and good conversation. Yes. Another one. Uh, as we inch closer to a thousand, I think we're almost there. Uh, they're very close. I got to check to see how many, uh, there's a lot of episodes there that we've done a lot of lovely and a lot of good conversations for and with all of you be well. We'll see you on the next episode and thanks for stopping by the gym master show. Cheers. <laughs>